everyone, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. So in today's video I wanted to talk to you about some of the Russian classic novels that I really loved studying in school. Some of them I already actually need to reread because it has been like 10 years <laughs> since I haven't read them. So I have like very vague memories of what the books are about and it's high time to come back to them. So I thought it would be good to just, you know, go through the book that I studied in school, look through them and kind of make a list of what books I would need to reread. I will go from author to author. We will start with Gogol. So, Nikolai Vasilievich Gogol. In my school we studied two of his his novels. Taras Bulba. Taras Bulba is actually very interesting. I need to reread that novella. From what I remember, it's a story of Cossacks. So, Kazaki, Cossacks. It's like a small nationality. They actually live on Ukrainian territory. And Gogol, he wrote a lot about like Ukrainian people, but obviously at that time Ukraine was part of Russia. And the story deals with the uprising of 1637, when Cossacks rallied against the Polish forces that were also present in the territory at that time. And the story is actually based on a family legend that Gogol heard from one of his friends. Uh, the friend told, them, told him that he had a grand-grand ancestor who had three sons. And so he based um, his book on kind of this character, so a father and his sons, and also the uprising. And there are a lot of topics in the book. The main character also philosophizes a lot. I remember our teacher made us to learn by heart like a whole page of text because like the whole page of text was the main character's kind of speech on, I don't know, like tavarishistva, so I guess it's like community, comradership, something like that. So he gave a speech on this comradeship. We had to memorize that speech by heart and then recite in front of everyone. So that was interesting. I really, really enjoyed studying it. The story itself is very readable and very interesting. Characters are very much alive. And you just feel for all of them. <laughs> like there isn't a single like bad character or a wrong character. Just everybody has different agendas in their lives. Like you kind of feel for all of them. Of course, you all obviously you also very much feel for the father for Taras Bulba because he's a very proud father of two brilliant sons who have just came home from the school where they were studying. And he, according to the traditions of Cossacks, he decides to bring them straight into the fight because he's like, we Cossacks, we don't waste time on military exercise. We study in the field. And so he decides, he like, as soon as they come back from the school, he brings them into the, you know, this military actions with the po Polish forces. You just see the family, how the mother is upset because she doesn't want to lose her sons, how sons are also, you know, feeling bad because they obviously very much love their mother. And this dad who is like, you know, very patriarchic dad and he's like, no, we need to fight. And yeah, it was just, I don't know, all the characters are very much alive and you just feel for all of them. Another short story also by Gogol that we studied was Chanel. Chanel, what is Chanel in English? Is it like overcoat? The overcoat, yeah. So the overcoat. This is a story of a small person. Story of life of small people, not important people, poor people in Russia at that time. We follow a story of this one government official. He has a very small rank. His job isn't really very much important. He is practically nobody. His salary is very low. He lives in this like also old ruined house, very dirty like apartment he doesn't have money to spare. This story is actually very sad. <laughs> Even when I remember it, I remember it was so sad and like, I don't know, my heart was just like, oh, I don't know, it was, my heart was aching for the character because I felt so bad for him. And actually we have a, an animation di director, his name is Narstein, so he is currently making like an animated version of Chanel and it's just so beautiful. I hope he can finish because he's already like very elderly man making this animated version of Chanel and like what I have seen from it so far on YouTube, I will insert some like small pictures. 
it looks so brilliant like but like he makes like the smallest movement of the hand because this person he works uh, in his office and his main job is to just like copy documents and so he has to like rewrite them and he really loves that job he he has his favorite letters to write he enjoys his job a lot and so that animation movie it just shows i don't know it just shows all the emotions on the face and in the actions of the character so hopefully we will have animated version of this But yeah, so in this book we follow this government official. He is very poor and one day he notices that his overcoat has become very old and he brings it to the tailor uh, and asks the tailor to mend it. The tailor says that he cannot mend it anymore because it's already too old. It's just he just needs to make a new overcoat. And so our main character he starts to, he decides to lower his expenses. He starts he stops drinking tea. He washes his clothes less because you know you, you have to give your clothes to a woman to wash it. So he does that less. So he kind of just starts to scrape money from here and there to save for his new overcoat. He saves it and then he buys the material and he, uh, the tailor makes a new overcoat for him, which he uh, he's very happy with. He's just so in love with his new overcoat. He's so excited for this. And then I will not tell you more because like uh, something happens. <laughs> but the book is very sad. <laughs> it's not like really a book, it's a very short story. But we, yeah, we studied it and basically it was, yeah, we discussed like lives of the small, unimportant, poor people in Russia at that time. Next author is Pushkin, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. And he was my teacher's favorite writer. I have a strong suspicion that we studied so much Pushkin because we really studied a lot of him because he was her favorite writer <laughs> but i don't know maybe it's re maybe it really was in the program we started with the belkin tales as our teacher told us he pushkin he wrote these tales specifically for women <laughs> Because you can notice, like normally if you read like a Russian Russian literature, if you read some of it, normally everything ends very badly. <laughs> like I heard somewhere this saying that like, uh, how, how can you describe Russian literature in a few words? You describe it in this way. Everything is very, very bad. And now let's talk about it on 300 pages. <laughs> so that's like, and I thought like it was so fitting because that's true, normally the stories are very sad and heart-wrenching and when you read the Belkin tales everything ends up being good <laughs> all of them have happy endings all of them are about love and you know yeah everything is great <laughs> there even though of course characters are still interesting and they still go through like certain events in their lives but everything ends happily <laughs> Everybody lives happily ever after in those novels and that's because they were written for women and I guess he was right because I actually really enjoyed those novels. The collection contains five short stories and all of them are about love. I remember two. I remember there is one short story, Winter, and another one... I forgot the, I for, I forgot the name. I really need to reread them. I remember I really enjoyed all of those short stories. They were really uplifting kind and they had happy ending. You don't have to be worried that they will put you like in a bad mood or a depressive state because they will not. They will make you feel good. 
<laughs> so this is the first uh, thing that we studied by Pushkin. Then we studied his short novella, which is The Captain's Daughter. And I also actually really, really enjoyed it. I don't remember if it has a happy ending or not. I feel like it has a good end from what I remember, if I'm not mistaken. So The Captain's Daughter is based on real historical events in Russian history, which is Pugachev Rebellion. It happened in 1773, when Yekaterina the Great was the Empress, and during her reign she was a very gentry-oriented ruler, so gentry during her reign was thriving. However, the simple people, the poor people, they had a very hard life, they were exploited, and so that's why the rebellion in the south of Russia began. And so that's the Pugachev Rebellion, the event on which the book is based. In this book we follow our main character, his name is Grinov. He is a young man, he has just graduated from university, and his father decides that that's enough for the boy to have fun, to like just enjoy his life. He decides to send him to the army. So he would become you know, like a real man, <laughs> a responsible, strong, real man. He sends him to the army. And uh, Grinov, on his way to the city where he was posted, he meets this poor uh, Cossack, Pugachev. So rebellion still hasn't started at that time. He meets Pugachev. And he was lost, so he asked his way. Uh, Pugachev helped him, and in to, sh to show his gratitude, uh, Grinov gave him his overcoat, because it was winter and it was very cold. And so then he went to his city. In the city he meets his captain's daughter and he falls in love with her. However, his father refuses to bless the marriage, because the girl is very poor, she has no dowry, and like it's just not a profitable marriage, so he refused. At that time, the uprising begins, the rebellion, Pugachev rebellion begins, and Pugachev forces approach the city where Grinov and the captain's daughter are living. And that's where I will start, because I don't want to spoil it for you, in case you want to read it. Um, I need to read the book. I remember I also really enjoyed it. One more novel, which is written as a poem, is Anegin. And it contains one of my favorite female characters of all time, Tatiana. I have already talked about it in my, I think, uh, Find Your Fellowship book tag. I will link it up here. So there was a question, with, um, character to swoon over. And so my answer was Tatiana from Eugenia Negin, because she's my favorite character. Like, I just, I don't know, I have so much respect for her. She's such a, she becomes in the end such a brilliant woman with like so much respect for herself first. I know I really loved her, so. Evgenia Anegin contains my favorite character. I remember the love story between Anegin and Tatiana, which I don't want to spoil for you, but it starts with Tatiana actually fall falling in love with Anegin. However, he didn't really like her that much in the beginning. He was more interested in kind of her sister because her sister was Olga. Her sister was like this very, you know, charming lady. So he, per per I think he personally preferred Olga. Uh, it's it's mostly a love story. It's a love story between Anegin and Tatiana. So I will not talk about it too much because it's not very long and I could spoil something for you. But I will need to read it. It's, quite, it's actually quite short, so it will be fast to read it. Okay, so next um, writer whom we also studied in school was Lermontov. Primarily a poet, but he also has uh, some novels and we studied Hero of Our Time, which I actually reread recently. I reread Hero of Our Time in the beginning of this year and I, I feel like once I reread it, I loved it even more than I liked it in school. In school I also enjoyed it, it was also fun, but I just, I feel like I didn't understand it very much, even though we discussed it with our teacher, but I just, you know, sometimes you just don't see certain things, maybe I was too young to see them, and now that I reread it, I thought uh, Pichorin was such an interesting character, but also you know, everybody is talking about morally gray characters. Yeah, so he's this type of character who is definitely not perfect. He is more negative than positive. Like, you know, he isn't actually a very good person. He isn't a nice person. Uh, but at the same time, he is also very likable. He is very intelligent. 
he is very well educated he is just a very likable i guess charismatic man like you don't hate him throughout the book but just as you see what he is doing you understand that he actually is very much self-centered person he is very much proud person but he is also bored <laughs> and practically what he is doing he is trying to have fun and entertain himself so it was very interesting read and I um, really enjoyed that. Next author was Turgenev. From Turgenev, I remember we studied his short story Mumu, which is also so heart-wrenching. I, I very vaguely remember what it's about. I remember it was about a dog. A dog, a person uh, who could not speak, he was like the owner of the dog, and the person's he was a servant of a lady so that lady i really don't remember what happens but i remember it was very sad something happened to the dog i don't remember <laughs> i remember that the story was really sad and it was sad because of the dog so you see i will need to read mumu also uh, fathers and sons fathers and son is uh, one of his well-known novellas. He has two very well-known novellas, at least that um, are well-known to me. <laughs> I read both of them and both of them I need to read it. So the first one is Fathers and Sons and another one is The Gentry Nest. So in school we studied Fathers and Sons. So Fathers and Sons is a novel about the conflict between two generations in the family. We follow two young men. One of them is Bazarov. He is a nihilist, that's how he calls himself. Which basically means that he is a representative of this movement that don't believe in any old kind of truths. He doesn't acknowledge any authority. He believes in science and facts. And so he and his friend Kirsanov, they arrive to Kirsanov's family house. They meet Kirsanov's parents. But then the relationship between Bazarov and the parents of his friend don't go very well and they leave. They leave to another town where they spend time with, with some young people of their generation. And then we, uh, they travel to Bazarov's house and we see the relationship between his and his parents who love him to pieces They adore their son. However, he being very Proud being very cold and detached. He gets tired of this love and he leaves them with his friend again You just see the relationship between children and parents between young generation and the old generation You see how young people can also be self-obsessed be very proud uh, and just self-centered so I also need to read that book because I also very vaguely remember what it's about but I remember that it was very touching <laughs> it was very touching and also you know it's Russian literature so it was sad then we also studied Goncharov Oblomov so Oblomov by Goncharov that novel is actually very interesting because it has to do with this I still don't, I, I, I really need to reread it because I remember reading that novel and I was so exasperated, I was so angry with the main character because he was so lazy, like he literally never moved, <laughs> he, I mean he moved obviously but like he was just sitting in his room doing nothing, not even, he couldn't even read a book, like he kind of, I remember that was like, he started a book, like maybe read first 20 pages and it put it on the table, like spread like that and the book became uh, dusted, so that's how long he wasn't taking it, you know, again, so he was very lazy and I couldn't understand why he was so lazy and he had this um, his other friend, his name was Stolz, so obviously he comes from this like uh, German kind of ancestry and Stolz was like the complete opposite of our main character he was very active, he always knew what to do, what needs to be done always knew how to achieve certain, you know things that he wanted to achieve. He always tried to help our main character. And then both of them fall in love with the same woman. Also, what I remember from the book, I remember that even though Oblomov was so lazy, 
but at the same time he was like a very nice person he had a very deep like you know like spiritual life reach i guess feelings and emotions and you know this inner world that's what we just i remember discussing with our teacher she said that like stolz represented like the material world and oblomov represents like the inner uh, kind of spirit and the you know your inner life your inner world then we also studied chekhov I don't remember if we studied his short stories. I don't think so. I remember we studied he, uh, the Cherry Orchard. Cherry Orchard is uh, a drama written by Chekhov, and it has it deals with the disappearing life and culture of the gentry class at, at, in the beginning of the 20th century and we follow a story of this family they lost all of their money and the only thing that is left for them is their house and the dear cherry orchard that the woman who is like the owner of the house she adores the cherry orchard it has a lot to do with her youth it's just very significant in, in your life however because she has so many debts her house and the cherry orchard are about to go to bank uh, and she will lose her home, she will lose everything, she will need to go abroad. She obviously doesn't want it, but she doesn't know what to do. She has this young person who kind of works for her, and he recommends her that, like, cut down the cherry orchard, separate it into small pieces of land, and then rent those pieces of land to people from the city, so they would come and, you know, they would have their gardens there, or, you know, it was the time when this like whole kind of garden culture, I guess, started to happen in Russia. And so, yeah, he suggested to cut down the cherry orchard. She didn't want to do that because obviously it's very important for her, but it was the only way. I will not tell you what happened. I also reread re Cherry Orchard in the beginning of this year and I also really enjoyed it. I also thought it was very touching and again I, under I feel like I felt and understood it so much more than when I read it in school. I have already talked a lot about Kuprin, the garnet bracelet, so I will not talk about it too much but it's one of my favorite short novellas but I, I have mentioned it in so many of my videos so we also studied it in school and I remember like all girls, especially girls because it's a romantic story, all girls in my class adored that novella. So the garnet bracelet, it's romantic, but also like very heart-wrenching and very sad, but just so good. I remember we also studied Master and Margarita by Bulgakov. Something I remember I really liked about Master and Margarita is that devil wasn't represented as this like evil, just like pure evil. It was represented as this like kind of wise character who wanted to see humans' vices and their faults. And he kind of came to Soviet Union to study the people living there and to see what their faults are. And the last author that I wanted to talk to you is Solzhenitsyn. We studied a day in the life of Ivan Denisovich in school. Solzhenitsyn, he He's a very important author of the late 20th, of the, like 20th century, middle 20th, late 20th century. He was in Gulag, so he was um, accused and he spent some time in Gulag. He writes a lot of books about that experience and uh, life, and One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich is one of those novellas about uh, lives of the people living in the camps. It's very heart-wrenching, obviously it's very hard. He has like a huge book, of Krugi Pervam. What is Krugi Pervam in English? In the first circle? In the first self circle. <laughs> so yeah, it's called In the First Circle. Um, I haven't read that. I think I watched, there was a TV series on our TV. I think I watched it with my parents, but I also really don't remember what happened there. I need to read more Solzhenitsyn. So far I've only read Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, which is, yeah, just a story of one day in the life of this convict person in this Gulag prison. So obviously it was very hard and heart wrenching to read and it was very sad. And I need to reread it because I don't remember much. <laughs> But yeah, so there you have it, guys, a few of Russian classics that we studied in school that I really enjoyed studying, and I definitely need to read some of them. So Pushkin, Gogol, Bulgakov, Solzhenitsyn, I will definitely need to reread those. 
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these Russian classics or maybe you have read some other Russian, Russian classics which you enjoyed and let me know what you thought of them, what classics have you read. Let me know of some the most important classics from your country. That would be interesting to know. Important classics from your country that you studied in school or didn't study, maybe just some important classics. Would be interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a very good day, staying safe, and I will see you soon in the next videos. Thank you very much. Bye.